Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. There has been times where I've found myself in a reading slump. Don't want to read anything, either a book that was really good put me in a slump, or a book that was terrible put me in a slump, and I just could not move past it. I thought it would be fun to give you some recommendations that even when I was in a slump, these books pulled me out, and I continued reading after that. Majority of these actually have good plots, but there's one that I just had to read because it was so mindless that I needed something so stupid with barely any plot to really push me through it, and then I could go back to reading good literature, so I'll include that in there too. The first book that I want to talk about is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. I haven't read the rest of the series, this is the only book that I've read, but I want to continue on with the series. I read it in the fall for like thriller, mystery books, and I love this book. I was reading it through the night. I could not put this book down. I needed to figure out what was going on. It follows Pippa. She is trying to solve a murder case. She thinks that a person that was blamed for killing a girl in town was actually not the guy that did it. So she's trying to go through all of the... what is it? What am I blanking on? Was it, um... go through all of the... words. I can't think of words at this point. Evidence. Evidence. Goodness. She's trying to go through all of the evidence that the police has that she's conducting on her own and trying to piece together and basically find the actual killer who did it because she doesn't think that the guy did it. Very easy read. The plot is intriguing. It keeps you on your toes. It's crazy to think that this girl's like 17, I think, because of the things that she puts herself through, but it's really good and I highly recommend. The next book that I read was another book that I read in the fall. It was scary. It was mystery. I didn't really know what I was going into because I only read the synopsis on the back. This book is crazy. That is You Will Be Mine by Natasha Preston. This book could have been five stars, but I need to tell you, with Natasha Preston books, all of her books end on a cliffhanger. And if you don't like that and you need, sorry, my, my brain is just not working correctly today. If you need closure when it comes to endings, maybe this author isn't for you because I read this book and the way that it ended, I was like, okay, I gotta get the sequel. There's no sequel. None of her books have sequels. They all end on cliffhangers. But this plot line was so good. I was terrified. I was reading this book at night and I don't know why I was doing that to myself. It was scary, but not in like a like a horror kind of scary, just kind of like the mystery and the intensity of the plot was so grand for me that I was just like sitting in my bed rocking back and forth. I like needed to check all the doors were locked, all the, you know, paranoid stuff. This book is really good. I read another one of her books that's The Haunting and that one was okay. I really like this one better, but I heard The Fear and The Island. I think The Cabin are like her most popular ones, so I might have to read some of those too when it comes to, you know, fall time because I just love a good cozy well, this isn't really cozy, but a good mystery thriller book in the fall. However, I also do like a good slasher summer, so this book is crazy. It's really good. The plot is so intense. So many plot twists. Another book that is um, an acquired taste for some, it is a dark romance, but I thought the book was really good and I finished it pretty fast, and that is Butcher and Blackbird. <laughs> by Bryn Weaver. Please read your trigger warnings for this book because it's intense. It is about two serial killers who kill other serial killers, but they're killing bad serial killers and it's their hobby. It's not their main job. That is the plot and then there's there's gory stuff that happens in this book. Intense detail of something, so if you get a little squeamish. Um, also, if your favorite ice cream is cookies and cream, I heavily recommend not reading this book. It's such an easy read. I read this during my dark romance month when I was reading only dark romances in the month of February. I did not have a good time reading that, but this book actually made me push through it and I really enjoyed it. It's not a five-star read. For some people it is, but it is an easy read. The plot line is very intriguing. The characters I love. There's supposed to be a second book coming out soon that I'm excited for. Now, this next book, please don't hate me. 
I kind of hate myself for recommending this book, but it, 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 it does keep you on your toes, it is intense, it's a great thriller, easy read, and that is Verity by Colleen Hoover. I know, I know. This book and Reminders of Him are the only books that I will recommend people of Colleen Hoover's, and even Reminders of Him I go back and forth with because it's just, it's sometimes, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not when I think about it, but specifically Verity, it is something that isn't usually in Colleen Hoover's genre, I guess. It's not usually something that she would write, and I think maybe that's why it's better than her other books. This follows a writer. She is hired to basically be a ghost writer and finish a book for another writer who is in an accident. She's paralyzed. She doesn't speak. She doesn't do anything. This woman comes in. She's hired by the paralyzed woman's husband. Creepy things are happening around the house. Not a book that you should read at night also because I was terrified. I wanted to leave the lights on. Is it great? No, but it does keep you entertained, it keeps you on your toes, and you, you gotta keep reading it until you get to the end. The plot twists are crazy in this book also. The last book that I'm gonna recommend in the mystery thriller type genre is Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. I'm gonna say something really embarrassing. Last fall, like I keep saying, I read a bunch of thrillers. It wasn't the best time. I used to read thrillers, and then I stepped into my romance era, and then I tried to go back to thrillers, and the ones that were recommended to me weren't good. This one is kind of like in the middle where the plot was really intriguing, but there were just a few things lacking for me, but it's still a really great story. There were so many different plot twists that happened in this book, and you're trying to figure out what is going on, and you're trying to speculate in your head, and there were so many times, you meeting me, <laughs> I was trying to figure out who, like what was going on, what was happening, I had these ideas in my head, I would write them down, and then I would be wrong. And then I'm like, okay, well then maybe it's this, and then I would be wrong. What I was gonna say, that's a little embarrassing, I thought Riley Sager was a woman. I don't know why, whenever I was talking about this book, I think I said she. I apologize, Riley. Um, I know now that you're a man. I've heard that there are better books from him. So I will be reading more of his books in the fall. This storyline has dual timelines. So the first timeline is present day. It's this woman, she's in like a construction company and she remodels houses, all this stuff. Her father wrote a book talking about the terror and the horrors that they went through when they bought a house when she was younger. And they were only there for like two weeks, I think, three weeks. They ran out of the house, fled, all their stuff was still there. And he wrote this book talking about their experience. It's kind of like an Amityville type thing. He passes away way and leaves the house to her, but he never ever wants her to go back into the house, but she's like, I don't want this house, I'm going to sell it. So when she goes back into the house, she's st slowly starting remembering things. Oh, also she doesn't remember anything from her childhood about being in this house, so she thinks what her father wrote was all fake, was made up, fake news. As she's back into the house, she's slowly starting to remember things that happened to her when she was younger, creepy things are kind of happening in the house, so she's trying to figure out maybe if her dad was telling the truth in his book. So it is intriguing. It is a good storyline. I was flipping through the book like crazy. Definitely got me out of a slump. The next two are contemporary romances and the first one was the first ever cowboy book or cowboy romance, I guess I should say. Uh, that I read and that is Done and Dusted by Lila Sage. I actually didn't read this book. I listened to it on Spotify because I actually don't know why. I don't remember hearing about this book on TikTok. I think I just like saw it when Spotify first opened up with audiobooks for premium members and so I was like, I'll take a gander at this. And I listened to it and I immediately loved it. So after I was done, I bought the book. It is so good. This is also a great summertime read, but it's definitely a fast-paced, easy read cowboy romance that just gets you all giddy. I have the second book too. I haven't read the second book yet, but I'm going to soon. She actually, Lila Sage, got me into Elsie Silver, and I could talk about Elsie Silver for a long time, but I do love Lila Sage. Like I said, it is a good, easy read. It'll get you out of a slump. And if you want to dabble in cowboy romances, this is a great one to start off because Elsie Silver, she has like a four book series and then she has another series that's five books and then she just started a new series. If you don't want to commit to a a large series. There's only two books in this so far, so you're not committing to a lot, which is nice. This next book is one that is compared to another book. 
and I'm recommending this one because I like this one better. That is Every Summer After by Carly Fortune. This book is compared to Love and Other Words by Christina Lauren. Love and Other Words came out before this book and so people were saying this book is basically a copy and paste of Love and Other Words. I read this book first before Love and Other Words and I think maybe that's why I prefer this one better. Love and Other Words, there was just like a lot that I just did not, I didn't connect with the characters, I, I didn't feel for them. This book I think I finished in like a day and a half, maybe even a night. I love the storyline. The only thing that I hated about this was there is a cheating trope in here and it made my blood boil. I think that's why I have a connection to this book is because there was a lot of firsts for me in this book. Small town romance, kind of um, friends to lovers, second chance romance, cheating trope. It's a great summer book, great summer vibes. Oh, also dual timelines. I, I enjoyed it. Like I said, I read it so fast, it'll, it'll take you out of a reading slump real quick. But if you wanted to read the back or read the synopsis of Every Summer After and then also read the synopsis of Love and Other Words and you like one better than the other, they're basically the same book. So you can choose whatever you want to. But yeah, that's kind of where it's at with those two books. Okay, so the book that I said that was not good, some people really enjoyed this book. I was not a fan of it, but I will recommend it if you need a mindless, no plot really type of book, and that is The Nanny by Lana Ferguson. I thought the storyline was actually pretty interesting. When I read the back, I was very intrigued. It just wasn't executed properly. It's not that good, but you want a mindless, no plot, easy read that'll just push you through the finish line and then you can continue reading other books. That is what this book did to me. It's about a woman who had an OnlyFans account and had a interesting connection with one of her followers or subscribers. Is no longer an OnlyFans girl. Flash forward, she is in debt. She sees in the newspaper that a man is trying to look for a nanny for his daughter. She meets him, she gets hired, she's a live-in nanny, she gets a connection with the daughter, it's a whole thing. Well, you find out that the man, the single father, her boss, was one of her subscribers or followers on OnlyFans, but he doesn't know that. And it gets weird. <laughs> if that sounds interesting to you, I'm probably not doing the plot justice, but that's basically what the whole storyline is. It is spicy, and that's basically it. The last book I'm going to recommend is one that I read on my Kindle. I just want to show you my little stickers. Aren't they so cute? Can you see it? It is one of the first books that I read on my Kindle. It's part of a series, but the second book hasn't come out yet, and that is The Veiled Kingdom by Holly Renee. This is a fantasy. It is enemies to lovers, kind of. They're enemies basically the whole book, but there is attraction here and there. She's the lost princess. Nobody knows she's the lost princess. The man is the son of the rebellion, like of the rebels. He hates the king. His dad hates the king. Everyone that's a part of this rebellion is trying to rise above the king. Again, nobody knows that she's the king's daughter. It's a whole thing. She's running away. It's a great storyline. I love this man. I don't really know how to pronounce- I'm gonna say Dacry. I could be wrong. I don't know how to pronounce fantasy names. It's really hard for me to pronounce fantasy names. Sumi. I really like this book. I'm very excited for the second book to come out. I think it's coming out in June or July, so pretty soon. It's really good. It is kind of long, but it didn't feel long. Like, maybe it's just because I was reading on my Kindle and I have the font kind of big. I just kept swiping and swiping and swiping and swiping, and I looked down, I'm like, oh my god, 50%? I'm already 50% done with this book. I literally just started it like yesterday. So it was a very quick read. The storyline was super interesting. The relationships between them is just so good. I'm a sucker for enemies to lovers. We all know this by now. It's really good. So if that sounds interesting to you, please read it. They have it on Kindle Unlimited, but you can also have a physical copy. I loved it so much that I'm actually going to buy the physical copy because like I said, I'm going to buy also the second book when it comes out. So I want to have the first book, but yeah, it's really good. Highly recommend. The cover's really cute too, so like that's an added bonus. Those are all the books that I thought of that will 
kind of take you out of a slump. I think the best type of books that really get you out of a slump is a good mystery, is a good thriller. I want to get back into reading more thrillers, so if you have any good like thriller recommendations that got you out of a slump or ones that you just really love, I really want to get into Frieda McFadden because I haven't read any of her books, but I have three of them on my Kindle in my library because I want to read them. It's Never Lie, The Housemaid, and The Housemaid's Secrets. I'm pretty sure that's what the second one is called. Looking forward to reading hers and more of Riley Sager's, like I said. So if you have any more of those type of recommendations, let me know. Those are just kind of the books. There isn't many. I mean, I haven't really been in the biggest slump. I think the biggest slump that I had, it put me in a reading funk for probably like two, two months. So that's not bad. I know people that have been like reading slump for like six months and all that stuff. I mean, if we want to go crazy, I was in a reading slump for probably six years, but we're back. And um, I don't remember what put me in a slump. If you want to follow me on any other social media platforms, I will have them linked down below. And I hope to be seeing you in the next video. Bye.